Hello everyone. So today I wanted to show you um, a bit of my research that I did really years ago now. Uh, I believe it was like five or six years ago at least. Uh, uh, it's centered around program synthesis. So program synthesis uh, is an interesting idea from the past uh, where we have a high level specification and what we're trying to do is we're trying to generate a program that will um, try to solve a problem using this high level specification. So the grand idea is that we will just tell the compiler what to do and it's going to solve our problem. Um, this is not the case though um, and there have been recent studies and recent ideas where uh, people are trying to apply program synthesis to like compilers and to be able to actually generate fun whole like functions that will solve our problem. And I don't believe that's a worthwhile idea because there's just better ways to, to, to code. Uh, but still, let me show you uh, what program synthesis is actually good for and has been applied in the past and is being applied to software in general um, in here and there basically in a couple of places that I know of. And it's based off this idea that instead of like trying to solve a like programmer's problem, let's actually try and solve a user's problem using program synthesis. And this is a good approach in my idea. So um, one of the uh, examples where program synthesis is really applied uh, and you can kind of tell that uh, that it is is regular expressions because that actually is a high level specification to solve the problem and some of the libraries will actually generate you an entire program that will actually do the search and do like you know the parser and lexer and uh, um, they're gonna search this like the search space okay let's move to our example and like I said, this is a very old software. Uh, it's full of bugs. It's, it's full of like oddities, but that's not the point. The point is to show you what program synthesis can do. So if we're a user and we have a table like this here, and our problem, let's just say that it, it's an Excel or something like the CSV file, right? And our problem here is that we want to get these mail messages and we're trying to extract the last name and the first name and possibly separated by a white space. So if we're the user, this is hard to do because it's a lot of work. It's really hard to automate this. Um, for the developer, it's really simple because it's just a script probably. Uh, and that actually depends on, on the file type, but if the file type is like a textual file, that's not a problem. That's like uh, 20 minutes of work plus 20 minutes of like testing and fixing word oddities sometimes, and that's it. But for the user, it's, it's super difficult. Okay, so if we're gonna apply program synthesis to this problem, uh, it's gonna be real simple for the user to actually do, a, do them themselves without learning how to code. So let's start with an example. And as you can see, uh, it already gave me out an output and it generated um, a bunch of statements that actually real resemble the, the program that were that we generated here. Um, so what we did here is we took um, the second uh, bit because it's after the dot and before uh, the at symbol and then we took the first one because it's at the start of the string and uh, before the dot and we just swapped places and did a uppercase function on them and that's it that solved the problem but as you can see here so first of all already this is good because we have some output that we can uh, sort of output and fix ourselves which is kind of the point of program synthesis most of the time. But if, uh, let's say that this, this isn't correctly generated because it just has the hello here. So what we can do is we can correct it and we can do world hello. And now we have a different kind of program which actually has a condition 
and um, and two statements. So one if the condition is true, and the other one if it's false. So the condition is based on the add symbol this time around, and as you can see, it solved the problem yet again. And we still have a problem, kind of, because we have like numbers here, and maybe we want to. Uh, format that as well, so we want to probably remove them. So what we can do here is correct like the, our engine again. So now um, it generated all of the correct outputs that we would like. And this is one of the examples that program synthesis could be useful for. Uh, I have a bunch, so my research actually has a bunch more of these programs and ideas, um, but they're going to be probably posted in a different video. So this was just to show you how we can uh, apply program synthesis correctly. And this kind of program synthesis is called an Oracle-based program synthesis. So we have a bunch of functions uh, in our language, so to say, uh, which we can generate an AS uh, abstract syntax tree from, and we can apply them uh, and walk that tree and actually generate different kinds of programs that fit um, our examples. So, you probably might be wondering uh, where uh, where is the catch here, because it's, it's really cool, uh, it has tons of functionality, the catch here is that uh, we can have conflicting expressions. Um, language is ambiguous, so um, if we have multiple dots, which which dot do we want? So it becomes more and more difficult. And if we keep adding examples, we actually extend the search space, and that is going to become huge even if you have something like 10 examples, so that generating an output and looking for that correct expression is going to take a very long time. Um, and that's a problem that still has to be solved with program synthesis. But the good thing is that in like last five years, we had like great uh, achieve, like breakthroughs in NLP and in machine learning, machine translation as well. and all of these techniques can be applied to program synthesis. And actually, there have been some applications where program synthesis starts to become like the thing to use. It's going to be used on a simple programs as well, because I don't believe it's going to generate entire systems anytime soon. But that's not the case, because what we're actually interested in is solving user's pain. And user's pain, pains are actually really simple. And using these advanced techniques, now we can do much better than we used to have like five or 10 years ago. Uh, because this, this, um, this code base here is based on language design because program synthesis started as a, uh, from the language design perspective, some from compilers, uh, abstract syntax trees, parsers, and stuff like that. But now if we incorporate NLP into the mix, it's going to get much better and hopefully we're going to see some good breakthroughs in that area soon. So if I have time, so I, I'm, first of all, I'm going to record different videos um, on different types of program synthesis because this is by example, there are different ones as well. And uh, yeah, second of all, if I, if I find time, I'm going to continue the research and hopefully have lots more to show you. So if you liked the video, uh, leave a thumbs up and that's it for now. Thank you. Bye.